Hi folks, I just wanted to make a quick video about a little comet that's been passing through stereo behind heliospheric imager number two. Uh, comet is called C2012V4. Uh, it's been seen recently passing up towards uh, towards Earth and it's been causing some concern for some people because it does look like it's coming at Earth from uh, the perspective of stereo behind uh, HI2. So you're looking here at images from HI2 and it doesn't look like uh, the images you see in online, uh, the images presented as JPEGs anyway, uh, because of all the processing that they do. Uh, they do a lot of processing to get rid of all this white light off to the left side. This is glare from the sun, because they're trying to image the very faint and tenuous heliosphere. So they do a lot of processing to get rid of this glare and to enhance the contrast of the images. And in the process of doing all that, they kind of uh, muddy the images of the constellations and stars. Uh, because they're not really interested in that, they're only interested in, in seeing the heliosphere. So I did my own processing of their raw data and left a more natural uh, view, glare included, because uh, that's not really what I'm caring about here. I just wanted to show uh, where the comet was in relation to the constellations and uh, compare that to uh, comet C2012 uh, V4. So it's very difficult in these images to see where the comet is, but it's actually uh, close to the constellation Orion. We can see Orion very clearly down here, uh, Orion's belt, these three stars, Orion's sword, down here, Betelgeuse, Rigel, and over here is this arc of stars that I like to think of as kind of being Orion's bow that he's kind of holding up uh, over his head. And what we see to the right is the comet passes through the bow and up to the left, uh, starting in the first frame in the animation off to the right here. Uh, the first frame in the animation is when you see this black bar here jump back to the right. Uh, and this black bar, by the way, is the uh, Earth occulter that they used to block light from Earth early in the mission uh, so that they wouldn't be uh, blinded from seeing the heliosphere. So you can see when it jumps back to the right, the comet appears right here where the cursor is, just above the cursor, and then it vanishes in the second frame. and successive frames of the animation. In the second frame it becomes uh, more difficult to see because it's kind of obscured by some uh, bright stars in Orion right over here. It kind of appears and vanishes but it's it's very difficult to see even if you know right where to look. By the third frame of the animation it becomes pretty obvious again. It's uh, over here, kind of away from any bright stars. It appears and then vanishes in the fourth frame and then in the fourth frame it appears up here and then vanishes. So you can see it there. It doesn't look as uh, big or bright or as obvious as it does in some of the uh, processed images that are up uh, on the stereo website because again they're doing a lot of contrast enhancement so even something that's very very faint uh, can look uh, quite pronounced if it's not a star because they're it, it has to do with the way they're processing the images but because this comet's moving uh, at quite a good clip and appearing uh, appearing to move a good portion of the distance through the constellation Orion in just a few days, it uh, tends to get brought out, uh, just like the heliosphere. The heliosphere is also uh, very difficult to see. It's, it's a very faint, low contrast sort of thing, so all the contrast enhancement they do uh, kind of uh, exaggerates the appearance of the comet. But you can see it moving uh, even in these images, and it's important to see where it is in relation to the stars, because we're going to compare that uh, using Celestia. So I use Celestia to put the camera at the position of, uh, of stereo behind, and then position the camera the way that uh, HI2 is positioned. So we see this uh, the bright object that was up here is Jupiter, uh, to the left is Earth. So yeah, you're actually looking back at yourself here. This is Earth way over here, uh, and then Jupiter over here and uh, basically you can see okay so the sun is off to the off frame to the left and the earth is here so uh, actually this spacecraft is is on the opposite side of the sun uh, from us really it won't be long before it actually uh, goes behind the sun from our perspective uh, and it's getting closer every day it's just kind of a, a slow gradual process and so as a result uh, the perspective that this spacecraft has when looking at the comet is dramatically different from the, uh, from the perspective that we have here on Earth. If you look at 
uh, star charts of where this comet is from our perspective on Earth, you'll see it's nowhere near Orion, and that's because this thing's on the opposite side of the Sun, and frankly on the opposite side of the comet as well. But if we use Celestia to uh, generate generate the view that uh, Stereo Behind has, you see that uh, Comet C2012 V4 is right where this comet is in the images. So this is uh, starting on December 1st here, and you can see that the comet's right here just off to the right of the bow area, and uh, indeed that's where it was in the first frame. Right here. And then in this uh, other animation I have over here, I highlighted where it was and did a, a direct comparison. So you can see it's right there. And then I compared the third frame. It's right here. And there's the comet in uh, Celestia. So that's what it is. It's this comet right here, C2012 uh, V4. And I'll select that comet now. In the program, and that will show you projection of its orbit. Okay, and now we can fast forward time and, and see where it goes, and compare that to the motion we just saw, as well as look at uh, its three-dimensional spatial relationship to the spacecraft and to Earth. So it cuts up through Orion, kind of looks like it's coming at Earth. And then it's going to appear to go above Earth and probably get lost in the sun's glare somewhere at that point. But let's go back for a second. So we want to know we want to know how this looks in, in three dimensions, not just two dimensions, because this doesn't really tell you if the comet's really coming at Earth. Uh, you want to look at it in three dimensions. You want to know uh, what the distance to the comet is from the perspective of st or, uh, from stereo itself as well as from Earth. So the camera is currently positioned at stereo and uh, the comet is about half an astronomical unit away. If you were to position the camera at Earth, I won't do that just yet, but uh, you'll see it's about 1.8 astronomical units away. So now I'm going to turn on uh, some orbit label or some uh, orbit projections for the planets and for spacecraft and turn off the diagrams of the constellations to, to make the view a little less busy. And now I'll zoom out and we'll look at how uh, how the situation looks in three dimensions, which is one of the nice things uh, about Celestia. It's a really nice little tool for looking at things like this. Let me also turn on the labels for spacecraft. Okay, so you can see where stereo behind is, and you can see where the comet is, and then Earth is way over here. So it's kind of deceptive in that two-dimensional view uh, from HI2. It looks like it's coming at Earth, but it's actually missing Earth completely. And in fact, you can see the red line of the comet's orbit doesn't touch the blue line of Earth's orbit. This line right here is Earth's orbit. Uh, this inner line here is uh, the orbit of Venus, and it doesn't touch either one, it just passes between us, between, uh, rather between the orbit of Earth and the orbit of Venus. So now we can fast forward through time a little bit and just watch it come up over the ecliptic. Like so. And as it does, it will get farther away from stereo and at first it will start to get farther away from Earth. It will close a little bit of distance past a certain point uh, because Earth uh, traveling in its orbit will actually bring it a little bit closer to the comet, but it's going to actually uh, it's not actually going to get all that close because it's it's well above the ecliptic by that time. So I'll rewind it a little bit here. Maybe not quite that much. That's good enough. Okay, back to December 1st, and then we'll tell the camera we want to go to Earth. Like so. And now, uh, let me reselect the 
comet, so you can see the orbit. And let me zoom in on Earth. I have a couple of satellites in the simulation uh, around Earth, which is what those gray lines are surrounding the planet. Oops, accidentally selected Earth. There we go. Okay, so now you can see uh, the approximate distance of the comet uh, from Earth. Uh, on December 1st, it's 1.4 AUs. I thought it was about 1.8. I guess that's not till later. But, um, yeah, clearly it's much further away from Earth than it is from Stereo B. From Stereo B, it's about half an astronomical unit away, and from Earth, about three times that distance. So that's that. Not really a concern, just an interesting little curiosity with uh, stereo behind. Hope you have a nice day.